Today's presentation will be showing how to install an Icon Vehicle Dynamics Stage 5 suspension system on a 2005 Toyota 4Runner. Raise the vehicle on a twin post lift and remove the passenger side front wheel assembly using a 21 mm socket. Disconnect the passenger side sway bar link from the steering knuckle by holding the stud with a 6 mm Allen socket and loosening the nut using a 17 mm ratcheting box end wrench. It may be necessary to tap the stud loose with a brass hammer. Remove the driver side front wheel assembly using a 21 mm socket. Disconnect the driver side stabilizer link using the same method as used on the passenger side. There are four bolts holding the front belly pan. Remove all four bolts using a 12 mm socket. Once all four bolts are removed, drop the rear of the pan down and unhook the front. Remove the rear belly pan by removing the four mounting bolts using the same 12 mm socket. Mark the alignment cams so that they can be repositioned after the installation is complete. Mark the rear cam and then mark the front. Apply some penetrating oil to the front alignment cam fasteners. Loosen the alignment cam and lower control arm by holding the nut with a 19mm box end wrench and loosening the bolt with a 19mm socket. Loosen the rear alignment cam by holding the bolt and loosening the nut. Begin disconnecting the lower shock mount by holding the bolt with a 19mm box end wrench and removing the nut using a 19mm socket. Leave the bolt in place for now. Position the under hoist jack stand under the lower control arm and raise it slightly. Disconnect the lower ball joint bracket from the steering knuckle by removing the two bolts using a 19mm socket. Lower and remove the under hoist jack stand. Remove the lower shock mount bolt by driving it out with a hammer and punch. Lower the lower control arm by pulling it downward. Begin disconnecting the upper shock mount by removing the rear outside bolt using a 14 mm ratcheting box end wrench. Loosen but do not remove the front outside bolt. Be aware that in some applications, these bolts could be nuts. Then remove the inside bolt. Now, while supporting the shock and spring assembly with one hand, remove the last of the three upper shock mount bolts and remove the shock and spring assembly. Be careful not to damage the drive axle boots. Raise the lower control arm back into place and temporarily install the lower ball joint bracket bolts. Leave both bolts loose for now. Remove the driver's side rear apron by popping these five snap clips loose using an upholstery tool. Remove the driver's side front apron by popping these three clips loose and one nut using a 12 mm socket. Release this wiring harness clip and push the wiring harness toward the engine back out of the way. Begin disconnecting the upper ball joint by releasing this clip. Remove the upper ball joint castle nut using a 21 mm socket. Lower the under hoist jack stand, lowering the lower control arm and steering knuckle. However, do not remove the under hoist jack stand. Leave it just below the control arm. 
Separate the steering knuckle from the upper ball joint by striking the steering knuckle as shown here. Raise the lower control arm back up again. Disconnect the brake line bracket by removing this bolt using a 12 mm socket and push the brake line bracket back toward the engine about one inch. Begin removing the upper control arm bolt by holding the bolt with a 19 mm box end wrench and loosening the nut with a 19 mm socket. Remove the nut and washer. Loosen the bolt by tapping it with a brass hammer. Be careful not to damage the threads of the bolt. Continue removing the upper control arm bolt by working the bolt forward. Moving the upper control arm up and down during this process may be helpful. Disconnect the ABS wire bracket using a 10 mm socket. Once the bracket is free, remove the upper control arm. Lay out the driver's side upper control arm with all its associated parts. Be sure the one being used is for the driver's side. Disassemble the tapered adapter by removing the bolt using a 12 point half inch socket and remove the upper dome. Install the tapered adapter in the uniball of the upper control arm from the bottom. Replace the upper dome and the bolt. Simply snug the bolt for now. It'll be torqued later. Install one bushing half from one side and then from the other side install the separator and then the second bushing half. Install the sleeve and push it in as far as you can by hand. Position the control arm on the workbench as shown and drive the sleeve the rest of the way in using a dead blow hammer. Install the second upper control arm bushing in the same way. Have an assistant position the upper control arm back in the vehicle. Place one of the supplied washers on the original control arm bolt. Start the bolt through the first bushing. Install a second supplied washer between the bushing and the frame and continue inserting the bolt. Once the bolt appears on the opposite side of the frame, install a third supplied washer. This washer may need to be tapped into place using a brass hammer. Continue inserting the bolt the rest of the way. Once the bolt is installed all the way, install the fourth supplied washer and the original nut. Simply leave the nut loose for now. Position the ABS wire bracket on the new control arm and install the washer and the supplied nylock nut. Secure the ABS wire in the bracket and tighten the bracket using a 12 mm socket. While raising the lower control arm and steering knuckle assembly, guide the tapered adapter into the steering knuckle. Install the supplied washer and nylock nut. Tighten the nut using a 22 mm socket. This nut will be torqued later. Then remove the under hoist jack stand. Remove the driver's side sway bar to frame mounting bolts using a 14 mm socket. Remove the passenger side sway bar to frame bolts in the same way. Remove the sway bar and set it aside. 
If there are sway bar spacers as you see here, they will have to be removed. Remove the driver side and then the passenger side using a 14 millimeter socket. Turn the reservoir bracket upside down and place the supplied spacer on the bottom of the bracket as shown. Install the original bolts in the non-threaded, recessed hole. Position the spacer and bracket assembly on the frame and thread in the bolts. Be sure that the threaded holes in the sway bar spacer is oriented toward the front of the vehicle. Snug these mounting bolts with a 14 mm socket. Then torque them to 30 foot pounds. Then install the passenger side sway bar spacer and reservoir bracket using the same procedure shown on the driver side. Select the driver side shock and spring assembly. Be sure you have the driver's side. Cut the zip ties releasing the lower shock mount spacers. Notice that one spacer is longer than the other. Proper installation will be shown later. Remove the lower ball joint bracket bolts. Raise and support the hub, knuckle and upper control arm assembly using the under hoist jack stand. Feed the bottom of the spring and shock assembly up over the tie rod, position the top of the upper shock mount and install one of the supplied upper shock mount bolts. Be aware that all three of these upper shock mount bolts should be installed with a lock washer. Be sure that the reservoir hose is oriented outward and toward the front of the vehicle. Install the second upper shock mount bolt and lock washer. Then install the third upper shock mount bolt and lock washer. Unthread and open one of the supplied hose clamps using a standard screwdriver. Insert the hose clamp around the front of the bracket and through the center hole as shown. Position the bottom of the shock reservoir in the hose clamp and reconnect the clamp. Be sure the clamp is positioned in the groove of the reservoir. Start the clamp by hand and then tighten it using a standard screwdriver. Be careful not to over torque these clamps, they're easily damaged. Position the top clamp and tighten it as well. Next, connect up the lower shock absorber. Install the longer spacer toward the front of the vehicle and the shorter one toward the rear. Lift up on the lower control arm with one hand, align the bolt holes and install the original lower shock mount bolt from the rear. Apply red thread locker to the threads of the bolt. Install the flat washer and then the nut. Torque the nut to 100 foot-pounds. Reposition the under hoist jack stand from under the brake rotor to the lower control arm. Raise the lower control arm so that the lower ball joint bracket bolts can be reinstalled. Apply red thread locker to the front ball joint bolt and install it hand tight for now. Install the rear ball joint bracket bolt in the same way. Torque both ball joint bolts to 166 foot-pounds. Then tighten and torque the upper shock mount bolts to 47 foot-pounds. Simply tighten the third upper shock mount bolt to an estimated 47 foot-pounds if it's not accessible with a torque wrench. 
lower the lower control arm and remove the under hoist jack stand. Then tighten and torque the upper ball joint nut to 81 foot pounds. Using a grease gun, pump in a good quality chassis grease until it comes out of the upper control arm bushings. Be sure to grease the front bushing as well. After pumping in grease, torque the upper control arm nut to 85 foot-pounds. Move the brake line bracket back into place, install the bolt, and tighten it. Using the under hoist jack stand, raise the lower control arm as far as you can without lifting the vehicle off the lift. Remove the tapered adapter bolt using a 12 point half inch socket. Apply red thread locker to the threads of the bolt, reinstall it back in the tapered adapter, and torque it to 90 foot pounds. Position the front alignment cam back where it was originally. While holding the nut, torque the bolt to 100 foot pounds. Repeat this same procedure on the rear alignment cam. Remove the under hoist jack stand. Install the passenger side shock spring assembly and upper control arm following the same procedures given on the driver's side. Position the sway bar back in the vehicle and align the holes. Install the supplied bolts and flat washers on the driver's side and then on the passenger side. Snug all four sway bar mounting bolts with a 14 millimeter socket and then torque them to 30 foot pounds. Install the driver's side sway bar link in the steering knuckle. Install the original nut. Then, while holding the shaft with a 6mm socket, tighten the nut using a ratcheting box end wrench. Once the shaft becomes secure, torque the nut to 52 foot pounds. Install the driver's side rear apron and snap the clips into place. The front apron will not be reinstalled on this application. Position the rear belly pan, align the holes, and start all four bolts. Leave them loose for now. Once all four bolts are started, Tighten them using a 12 mm socket. Then install the front belly pan using the same procedure that was shown on the rear belly pan. Begin removing the left rear wheel assembly by removing the lug nuts using a 21 mm socket. Once the lug nuts are removed, remove the wheel assembly. Begin disconnecting the driver's side stabilizer link by spraying the threads with penetrating oil. Hold the link using a 14 mm open end wrench and remove the nut using a 12 mm ratcheting box end wrench. Once the nut is removed, remove the washer and then the rubber bushing. Remove the passenger side rear wheel assembly using a 21 mm socket. Disconnect the passenger side stabilizer link using the same procedure as shown on the driver's side. Begin disconnecting the driver's side shock mount by holding the shock absorber with a 21 mm open end wrench and removing the nut using a 19 mm box end wrench. Remove the nut, the washer, and the rubber bushing. Compress the shock absorber and remove it from the mount. 
Begin disconnecting the lower shock mount by removing the bolt using a 17 mm socket. If rust is present, apply penetrating oil. Once the bolt and washer has been removed, pry the lower shock mount off the shaft. Remove the shock by guiding it out of the bottom. Remove the passenger side shock absorber by following the same procedure as shown on the driver's side. Now that both shock absorbers have been removed, push down on the driver's side rear axle assembly and remove the coil spring and bump stop. Use caution here. Make sure you're not overstretching the flexible brake lines, ABS sensor wires, or the emergency brake cables. Remove the passenger side spring and bump stop in the same way. Notice the springs being installed are taller than the springs we removed. Therefore, to install the new springs, we will have to push the rear axle assembly farther down. To reduce the risk of damaging the brake lines, we disconnected this brake line bracket. Position the supplied striker plate on top of the lower spring mount. Make sure the bevel is oriented upward. Drop the supplied countersink bolt through the center hole of the striker plate. Hold the striker nut by the handle and extend it under the lower spring mount. Align it with the threads of the bolt. Tighten the bolt using a 730 seconds Allen socket. Continue tightening the bolt until 10 foot-pounds is reached. Begin assembling the air bump stop by placing the air bump cylinder in the bracket. Be sure the air bump cylinder goes all the way in the bracket. Hold the bolt with a 7 16 open end wrench and tighten the nylock nut using a 7 16 inch socket. Torque the nut to 10 foot-pounds. Place a 2x4 on top of the rear axle assembly. Place the factory jack on top of the 2x4. Raise the jack until it contacts the bump stop or the frame. Continue raising the jack, pushing the rear axle assembly downward until there is enough space to get the new spring in place. Do not push the rear axle assembly downward any more than is absolutely necessary. Additionally, Closely watch the brake lines, ABS wire, and emergency brake cables to see that they are not overstretched. Place the air bump stop in the top or large end of the spring. Begin installing the spring by positioning the top in the upper spring mount and then the bottom on the lower spring mount. Rotate the spring until the coil fits properly in the mount. Once the coil spring is in place, lower the factory jack. Remove the jack and the 2x4. Ready the rear shock absorber by installing a supplied washer and rubber bushing. Position the supplied shock absorber in the vehicle. Begin connecting the lower shock mount by installing a supplied spacer on the lower shock mount. Then connect the lower shock eye. If the shaft was rusty, it may be necessary to sand it slightly using emery cloth. It may also be necessary to drive the lower shock eye on with a dead blow hammer. Once the eye is in place, install the second supplied spacer and the factory washer and bolt. Snug the bolt using a 17 millimeter socket and then torque it to 72 foot pounds. Raise the rear axle assembly while guiding the upper shock stem into position. Install the second rubber bushing, washer, and nut. Tighten the nut using a 19 millimeter open end wrench until the bushings are compressed and bulging slightly. Once the upper shock is connected, remove the under hoist jack stand. Position the reservoir bracket on the frame as shown and install the supplied bolt and lock washer. Leave the bolt loose for now. Install the rear reservoir clamp and then install the front. Ensure that the screws and the clamps are oriented downward. While holding the clamps and bracket in position, tighten the bolt. 
Position the reservoir in the clamps ensuring that they set in the grooves of the reservoir. Tighten the rear clamp using a standard screwdriver and then tighten the front clamp. And then finally, install the supplied hose bracket using the supplied bolt. Now install the passenger side air bump, coil spring, shock absorber and reservoir following the same instructions used on the driver's side. Position the driver's side stabilizer link in the bracket. Install the factory rubber bushing, washer, and then the nut. Tighten the nut using a 14 mm ratcheting box end wrench. Connect the passenger side stabilizer link following the same instructions shown on the driver side. Reconnect the brake line bracket using a 12 mm socket. Install all four wheel assemblies and lug nuts. Snug the lug nuts using a 21 mm socket. After all the lug nuts on all four wheels are snug, Lower the vehicle until the tires press against the floor. Then tighten the lug nuts in an increasingly tighter crisscross fashion until 80 foot-pounds is reached. We remind you that installing a lift such as this will affect proper wheel alignment. We strongly recommend that you have this vehicle professionally aligned as soon as possible. Failure to do so will negatively affect tire wear, braking, and steering stability. That concludes today's presentation. We hope these instructions have been helpful to you. If ever we can assist you with your off-road needs, simply log on to www.lowrangeoffroad.com or give us a call at 801-805-6644.